Kurt Von Deist for RGGEDU, and right now we are retouching risotto balls. So I have in my trusty notes from Rob that overall he's happy with this image, uh, but wishes that this one risotto ball on the left was a little bit more round in its shape. The other two are feeling nice and round, but this one feels a little oddly formed. So that's our big ask uh, thing that we need to correct for, that we need to solve in retouching. Otherwise, we'll just do some basic cleanup and a little enhancement for contrasting color. Screen Capture 1, I could look at just what it looks like if I open up just a little bit, but very quickly everything in the background blows out. But I like having a little bit more exposure on the food itself. This is a backlit environment. And just bringing out a little bit more exposure there will be nice. But since it blows out everything in the background, I'll save that for to do that in Photoshop so that I can control it and put it in a very, that adjustment in a very localized area. So as far as capture one adjustments go, I'm not going to adjust anything. I'm just going to process this out and do all my editing from here in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of the, the big challenge that we need to solve in this image first, which is reshaping this left-hand risotto ball. I said big challenge just because it's bigger than anything else we need to do in this image, but really it's no challenge at all. Of course, there's multiple ways that we could attack this. We could select it very specifically and copy it onto a layer and then warp it somehow to have to recreate this shape. Great thing about Photoshop is there are so many, there's so much redundancy of different tools that you could use to solve a problem like this. The way I want to use is uh, to use the liquify filter. So to start with, I'm going to select a broad area and copy and paste, command C, command V, and that'll paste just this section on its own layer. I could have duplicated the background layer, but there's, I'm only working with one small piece of the image, so there's not much need in duplicating all of the rest of the pixels. But I also want to be sure that I selected plenty of extra room. I don't want to be real specific in my selection. I need to have some room to work with. I'm going to go into the filter menu and go to liquify. So liquify filter is a great feature in Photoshop and it's one that's been around for a few versions of, photo, uh, of Photoshop and they've continually made it better and better. When it was first introduced, I think in CS4, CS5 maybe, can't really remember, it was like, oh, this would be a great, it seemed like a great idea, but it just didn't work super well. It made things look weird, and um, but they keep making it better and now they've gotten it to a point where I use liquify a lot. I really like this filter. And it's great for just kind of finger painting with an image almost. The most useful tool in liquify is the forward warp tool. And with this tool you just use your paintbrush to kind of push things around. So you can see as you're getting used to it, go ahead and play with an image and just see, get a feel for what this does. You can do really ugly things and then hit Command Z just to undo that, just to get a sense for how it works. And then we're going to refine back and use it just, a, just enough to have the desired effect. So this is definitely the kind of filter that you want to just barely use. And so I'm going to use this as a combination of using a big brush to make a big area move a little bit and then go in with a smaller brush and move just a little, little parts of it out. So I'm just using this to kind of push around the edges of the ball to reshape it into more of a ball shape. 
because these are asparagus, I'm um, sorry, risotto balls. And now when I get it kind of close to what I think looks good, I can say OK, and it will run that filter and apply it to my image. And now I can turn on and off that layer and see the work that I've done. Now at this stage, if it doesn't look good, I want to redo that. I want to uh, go in my history and undo liquify and give it another shot. The other thing about liquify is you want to be sure that you go in there and really look closely at the area that you manipulated because you can get some little spinny parts and um, some things that look a little smudgy and weird. So as a next step, I'm going to create a new layer and into some of these areas that were smudged, were forward warped, I'm sorry, not smudged, but forward warped quite a bit and starts to look a little distorted. I'm just going to take a section of the risotto ball that was not really distorted and just clone into the area that was a little distorted just so that I get some kind of true shapes in there. And I mentioned there's lots of different ways to achieve something like this in Photoshop. And they all come with their inherent pluses and minuses. So while this is the way that I think makes the most sense to do this particular task, there are certainly other options that could yield a good result. Such as using the Puppet Warp tool. But as a rule of thumb, I don't worry about all the ways that I could do it so much as uh, what I, I just go with what I think is going to give me the best result and then try it out and then evaluate. Did that work or did it not work? If it didn't work, then I'll go try a different method. In this case, I think our liquify tool worked just perfectly for this, so I'm not going to bother with going in trying it out a different way. Now that my left hand uh, risotto ball is nice and perfectly round, I kind of feel like this middle one is just not quite as round. And so I'm going to go back to my layer with my liquify it's a good idea to name this so I know what's going on. Just do LIQ for liquify. And I can go back into liquify. I'm just going to make a very small shift here. See what it looks like if I just make this little corner of this one just a little more rounded. This is a little more complicated because there are these greens on the outside. So I just want to be sure that I don't uh, really distort them too much. <clears throat> so there's also a reconstruct tool in Liquify. That's the second tool down. And this one is just by painting, undoing what you did. So I can look at it, what it looked like before, now that I'm really zoomed in there, and maybe just try again. This one, I think less is certainly more. I just want this to be just a small little nudge into a more, a more perfect round shape. I think that looks good. And again, I'm going to zoom in here all the way and see if there's any little smudgy areas that I need to add in a uh, bit of perfect texture from area other areas of my risotto of my risotto ball nice next step just general cleanup of the image
something that no image can escape. It's something we just always need to do. On these risotto balls, there are a few, particularly on this left one, there's kind of a, uh, a specular highlight on the front that makes it feel a little greasy. I'm just going to tone that down. And just anything that catches my eye, that pulls the focus away from the overall dish, some of these specular highlights in the sauce and where the sauce is on the risotto ball really catch my eye. So I'm going to take all those out. And I'm going to clean up the plate where there's some crumbs and I don't think this dish should uh, look particularly crumb filled. So I'm going to clean up it's just this one section of the plate that seems to have some crumbs stuck to it. Remove most of those. And as I'm working in this area of just flat white of the dish, you may be thinking, why aren't you using the spot healing brush tool? And that's a good point. A lot of this, this is kind of the area where the spot healing brush tool uh, excels. But then I quickly get into an area where the spot healing brush tool doesn't excel and I find myself going back to my good old old-fashioned does exactly what I tell it to do clone stamp tool. So either is a good answer as long as you're paying attention and making sure that you're getting a good clean result. I really only pull out the spot healing brush tool to clean a lot of dust or a lot of specks along a very simple gradient. If there's anything with edges in there, any cloning along, uh, clean up along an edge, spot healing brush tool just doesn't quite do it. You can fiddle with it and give it some some different, you know, multiple tries, and you might get a result that works. But I find that in mo the majority of cases, it's more hassle than it's worth because I'm well practiced at using the clone stamp tool. And if you're not as comfortable with the clone stamp tool yet, I encourage you just to keep with it, to keep working with the clone stamp tool. It gets easier with practice. Your cloning will get better with practice. Just to remember to keep a low opacity. Don't do it at 100%. Usually do it 20, 30 to 50% opacity and to use a soft brush with zero hardness and to continually change your source point. So my finger just kind of hovers over the Alt key and I change my source point for almost every clone. And with enough practice this really becomes just second nature so I'm not really thinking about Oh, should I put it here or should I put it here? It just becomes second nature.
But if you constantly resort to just using the uh, smart tools, the spot healing brush tool, to do your cleanup in any complicated gradient areas, you'll wind up not getting comfortable with the clone stamp tool. And then you get into a situation where the spot healing brush tool just does not solve it for you. And you have to use the clone stamp, but you'll be more frustrated because you haven't practiced it much. So there's this one little wobbly edge in the plate. Um, it's just a part of the glazing. It's just the way the plate is. I'm gonna use my clone stamp tool just to kind of straighten out that line. So it becomes a little more perfect. And just moving around the whole image with cleanup, it, the area of sharp focus is always where you need to do the most cleanup. But you want to be sure to look at all, all parts of the image. You may not be seeing dust or crumbs where it's out of focus, but there can certainly be distracting elements that can be softened, removed, or blended out. Highlight kind of along the edge of the frame. I was just really aware of little cutoff highlights towards the edge of the frame because uh, they can really pull your eye outside of the image completely. A lot of this is just about controlling how your eye explores the image. I want it to go straight to the subject of the photograph and be able to rest there easily. When there's loud distractions on the edge of the frame, your eye just naturally wants to move over there. Okay, I think overall this looks good. Zoom out, look at it with fresh eyes, and my eye goes straight to these highlights in the, the knife and fork reflection. And that's really just because it's right behind my subject. I think that's a little complicated, so I'm going to make a new layer to go in and tone that down. I like making a new layer for any little specific things like this, that I, particularly that I didn't notice on my first pass of, of cleanup, because I may want to come back and reduce my layer opacity just a little bit to kind of split the difference. So it's easy to clone it out completely and then use my layer opacity just to bring back some of the original blemish so that it's not all completely smoothed out. Now these highlights on the end of the knife are catching my eye, so I'm going to use the same layer to take some of the intensity off of those reflections, just to kind of tone them down a little bit. And so now I'm going to look at where do I want this layer opacity to fall, just to tone down those some so they don't distract my eye quite as much. And now my eye is really drawn to this little uh, gap in the salad. And that's good. That's okay because it's inside of the dish. So it's in the area that I do want the eye to really go to. But I'd rather it rest on the balls themselves, the risotto. 
I'm going to see if I like it better with that removed. And uh, I was getting some repeating patterns. I wasn't liking my cloning, so I just erased the work that I did in that little area and try it again. Doesn't matter if everything's perfect on the first try. What matters is noticing where the work is imperfect, imperfect and trying again, undoing, redoing, until it is perfect. It's a process. Okay, so uh, I think the shapes of the risotto balls look good. Um, I'm not really being pulled by any major distractions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to working with adding a little contrast. When I open up the curves, I like to just explore before adding a point and leaving it there. See what does it look like when I make it a lot brighter? What areas do I like when it's a lot brighter? What areas do I like when I uh, darken it down, add more tone? Find where I like highlight point generally. And now I'll add a shadow point and bring that down just to add a little contrast overall. Turn that off and on. I like the direction that that's going. I would like the subject to have just a little bit more openness, a little brighter, a little more contrast than the scene generally, just to help pull my eye there. So I'm going to make another curves adjustment and just add a bit more contrast, a bit. Now I'm ignoring all of the bright areas in the background and I'm just looking at the dish, the hero risotto balls. Once I have a point on the curves, I can use my arrow keys on the keyboard just to nudge it up and down and make really, really fine tune where that point is uh, much more precisely than I can do with my uh, pen or mouse. And now I'm going to flip that mask to black and just paint white to reveal it in the area that I want. Now you'll notice that I'm not painting it really specifically right around the balls. Instead, I'm deliberately painting outside of the line some. And my brush is a low opacity, so multiple brush strokes add up to give me full effect right in here and has just a little bit of spillover effect outside of there. I think wherever possible, blending is better than being really specific and cutting out. Because if you were really specific and cut out, it winds up looking cut out and looking manipulated. But if you paint outside of the lines, you can blend it and come up with a more natural end result. So I noticed when I was doing my exploration that there was something nice happening when I made it dark, uh, particularly in this water glass up at the front and this uh, in the back left corner. Um, I make the mid-tones and shadows generally darker. And I did bump up my highlight just a little bit so that it doesn't get muddy and flat in that darkness. I hate what it does in here. So I'm going to flip my mask to black again, Command-I, and paint white to reveal this darkening. So I think I'm liking this mostly on the edges, so this will wind up being kind of a vignette. But it's not just darkening. Just change the, uh, the contrast here as well.
We've got this one little piece of bokeh back here. Generally, I like bokeh. It's nice. Just it being the one little piece right in the corner, I think, is a distraction. Sometimes I might look at adding more bokeh in here to have more of that dappled effect. But the easiest thing will be just to take it out. I did this on its own layer so I could look at reducing my layer opacity so that I'm, instead of taking it out completely, I just took it out 50%. and so it just catches my eye that much less. I'm gonna hold down my Option key and click on my background layer to turn everything off and everything back on. Um, I think this is looking nice. I think this shadow is really catching my eye now. And I think in my, uh, this last curves that I did, it's kind of darkening that shadow down so I'm going to mask that off specifically around that shadow. One step forward, one step back. Now that I'm really looking at this shadow and thinking about this shadow, it's got some funny qualities to it. There's some different tones in here. I think I might just need to go in and simplify the shadow a little bit. particularly over here on the left side. Uh, so again, I'm using my clone stamp with a nice low opacity, just so I can kind of blend the differences in this shadow. So working with this shadow just to simplify the transitions between the different shadows uh, the shadows caused by the different lights used to light this scene. The other thing I might do is if I turn off my adjustment layers, I can use a blank layer, and I'm going to sample, pick up a color from the table surface outside of the shadow, and with my paintbrush and a really low opacity, 10%, I can paint. So this is just another way to blend with a gradient, and I am just literally painting over my image. And this can work because there's really no detail here. There's not a defined pattern in this table. It's out of focus. So I can use this just to soften and blend the gradient of the shadow a little bit turn on my adjustment layers, and turn that effect off and on. See, that's just reducing the intensity of that shadow. Um, although I painted on this layer, I can certainly just switch over and continue cloning on this layer. which makes sense to me to keep it on the same layer because I'm working on the same issue here. Simplifying this shadow. Nice when you're working on an image for a little while and you get into the weeds of really specific issues just to remind yourself to stop and look at the whole image to help find a bit of perspective. 
when I'm working on a bunch of pictures, I like to move on to a different picture and come back to this picture. Um, or get up and walk away from the desk for a minute and come back to the picture. Something just to trigger your mind into forgetting what you were looking at for a second so you can look at it with fresh eyes. So when I do that, I notice these little reflections in these uh, little vials of liquid that were kind of catching my eye. So I'm going to simplify those. And the other thing I'm noticing is that these bean pods, and actually now I'm remembering that Rob made a note of this in his notes, that uh, the color on these bean pods falls a little flat, falls a little gray, I think it'd be nicer if there's a little more freshness of green in them. So we could look at just ramping up saturation a bit. Lots of ways to work with color. Uh, when I'm working with a specific color like this, I generally look at it a couple of different ways. In this case, you know, they are green. I just want to ramp up that green and, and um, clarify the shade of green that it is. Hue and saturation is good for that. I'm going to ramp up the saturation, but even just with added saturation, they're just kind of an odd color of green. They have a lot of brown in them. And so by shifting the hue slider, it does all sorts of weird things to the rest of my image, but I'm just paying attention to these bean pods. Shifting my hue and adding a lot of saturation clarifies that they're green and gives them a little more pop of color. So that's good. Now I'm going to flip my mask to black. Just paint in my adjustment specifically where I want it. Kind of low opacity. I'll just make a general pass to get the vast majority of it. And then with a bit smaller brush, I'll go in there and get all the corners and make sure they're all getting a nice amount of that added green saturation and hue uh, boost. Turn that on and off to see the effect that it's having. Now they look like green pea pods and not gray pickles. <laughs> I might just look at what I added contrast and a little darkening to the edges, but I might just look at what it look like if I take that a little further. Really a lot of darkening and contrast. Again, I'm going to flip the mask to black. And at this point, I'm just kind of experimenting. I'm not trying to solve a real issue that I see. Just kind of see what else can I give to this picture. I think adding some contrast and darkening, particularly on this front right corner, just makes all those tones in the glass really come out and uh, look interesting. And this adjustment also does something kind of nice on these back glasses, adds a little separation. So this is turning into a bit of a, a bit more of a vignette. Turn on and off all the work that I've done. See my eye really rests easily in the dish. Got nice shape and nice color to all the things. The shadow under this plate is not nearly as distracting as it was. It's a finishing touch. I might just come in here in this front glass and tone down some of the most extreme dark and high uh, dark spots and highlight spots. 
just to take a little edge off that. I generally like the tones in here. Just want the extremes to be mitigated a little bit. And with that, I'm happy with this image. I'm gonna save it and move on to something else.